The most wonderful time of the year. Full of sugar, freezing temperatures, seasonal depression, infrastructure collapse from the weather. The wonderful Christmas season. So let's all sit down and have a probably two video long chat about the winter wonderland in December. In June or July, whenever this goes up. Let's kick it off with the hag in the bag, Jolly Saint Nicholas, otherwise known as Santa Claus, the only man who doesn't need to lie about his tendency to spy on children. Jeez, talk about privilege as white as snow. Although, it's not surprising that the old fart can get away with whatever he wants. He's like the homelander of the holiday world. He's literally created and funded by huge corporations like Coca-Cola, Amazon, Google, and Enron. That kind of funding is the best way for someone to have a warehouse in the North Pole, with full manufacturing and international shipping range, no doubt immune to national embargoes or tariffs due to political bribery. And, they have farms to raise and maintain reindeer in a foreign habitat. That must include temperature, humidity, and light regulation. An entire dome to house deer inside, only to force them out and fly across the world in 24 hours. What's Santa's nationality? Cause I doubt he was born in the pole. I reckon it's not as obvious as we think. His name is Nicholas, so it might be an Anglophone country. But... What stands in the way of Santa being from, say, Ireland? I'll tell you what does. Capitalism. Capitalism would tell us that Santa is a born and bred American suburban guy in order to have us relate to him more. And he only shops from your local Walmart. That's where all the Coca-Cola propaganda comes from. I'm pretty sure it was Coca-Cola themselves that came up with the Santa character. If he was really here, you know he would be incredibly silent on the recent Georgia voting laws. Why do you think that he is able to have access to so many toys? He's just given them by rich CEOs who want to advertise their products. All kidding aside, it's an incredible trick to make parents need to buy the fancy stuff by saying it's Santa's magic, and that there's no way he wouldn't get you a PS5. What do you reckon Christmas is like for billionaires? Granted, I'm sure everything in life is unrelatable with billionaires, but Christmas is usually a time for giving. And since that idea is foreign to billionaires, I guess they just roll in extra amounts of money during that time. Good for them, the bastards. I would really love to see a reboot of The Grinch made by billionaires, where they try to make him seem like a socialist, mainly for the reaction that Twitter would get, simping over The Grinch and loving him as a role model. But even then, it wouldn't stop all the insane sales that happen during Christmas. That's kind of just how it works. We dislike the way capitalism affects our society, yet we still succumb to its temptation. That's the magic of sales. Look at the classic two-for-one. Who can resist being told your money will double in value, cause you'll get double the product? Do you need that product? Better question, do you need to care? You're getting two videos here after all. Do you care if you need it? And the humble 25% off. Technically not as good as the two-for-one, but when you've been having your eye on something special, it can be a big deal. Even if the object was hiked up in price from the get-go from what it originally cost, now you only have to pay a little more unnecessary money to support the luxuries of the wealthy. Man, I'm in a damn mood, ain't I? Marking up the price to lower it is a common practice, although I wouldn't be remiss to mention it is very illegal. And since everybody does it, arrest everyone. Just do it. No one can stop you if everyone's arrested. Companies will also try to give you an artificial sense of urgency with an arbitrary time limit. A slightly different colored, limited edition? Oh boy. I'm sure am glad that I got this item I'm never gonna use. If I had waited a little longer, I wouldn't have had it at all. How embarrassing would that have been? And urgency is also a factor when you've got yourself a pre-order. Because what says America like buying something and then needing to wait even longer before getting it? You know what they say, always count your chickens before you have any chickens. Speaking of counting livestock, how about those elves Santa's got working on his warehouses? What's the deal with all that? 
I wouldn't expect such a charitable man to have such questionable employment. First off, their height. Elves in most fiction are significantly taller than people. Usually elves are these pointy-eared, agile, long-living people. But with Santa, he's just got little garden gnomes working in a chop shop. Why don't these elves have the same pointy dumb ears? Instead, their ears are like leaf-shaped ears. How are you going to cut someone with that? I mean, I don't know how elves are going to cut them with their regular ears, but it definitely won't work with Christmas elves. And they've got little jingle bell hats. Where did those Christmas hats even come from? Who decided to get a Ku Klux Klan hood and put a metal bell on top? Were people just losing their racists? God, I wish it was possible to not know where a racist is. Just leave him in the forest, get lost. And how are the working conditions for the elves? Because they're so small, I imagine they're getting stuffed next to each other and working on toys for hours on end. They might even need to start peeing in ornaments during the work, and then their Twitter account will do a shit job denying it. The North Pole better have unions. To deal with the hellish weather while also being ground to dust on the conveyor belts is something the elves deserve better than. They should embrace some sort of socio-economic structure focusing on having the workers own the warehouses. Or something like that. When Christmas rolls around, one of our favorite things is all of the candy. Second only to Halloween, Christmas is a hot spot for processed sugar wrapped in peanut butter and food coloring and packed into a goofy shape. The classic Christmas candy cane, for instance. Who hasn't looked at Christmas and imagined the shape of a cane? Did that come from Ebenezer Scrooge? Or did a candy stick just get too old to keep it up anymore? And then there's that Turkish delight stuff that, according to Narnia, is cocaine in a wrapper. But... Have you ever had Turkish Delight? It sucks. Edmund was just a murderous asshole. Stupid Edmund.